I'm Andrew. I am Lee. And this is uh, your weekly nerd news. Uh, it talks about anime and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Just today, okay, just today, they announced that John Cena is going to be playing Duke Nukem in the Duke Nukem movie. Okay? Oh, there's... There's a couple of ways this could go. Uh-huh. I, uh... I'm probably not going to see it just because I've never been a Duke Nukem fan. But, um... It surprises me that they're even trying to attempt a movie because of how poorly Duke Nukem Forever was received. It took about 15 years for Duke Nukem Forever to come out. And when it came out, it was so bad that within a week, GameStop was selling used copies for $20. That's how many used copies that they were just flooded with because people bought it and were selling it back right away because it was garbage. So, um, yeah, not sure what they're planning on doing with the movie with a franchise that's pretty much dead and is like kind of a joke of the internet. But there you go. They've well, signed on John Cena to be Duke Nukem. John Cena himself is kind of a joke on the internet, but he's capitalizing on that fact. But he's not a joke like where people mock him. No, he's a meme. Yeah. He, he is in and, of, in and of himself a meme. Yeah, he's a meme. Yeah, he, uh... Yeah, that's completely different from being a joke. Alright. So, yeah. What, you know, I, I can accept that, that, yeah. That's what they want. So may, maybe this meme can revive that joke. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, that news uh, just barely came up in my feed as we were getting ready to record tonight, so I had to make sure we covered it because that's it's just kind of absurd, you know? <laughs> Whatever. Um, that's, uh, that, that's for that bit. Uh, next, uh, we recently got an announcement just the other day um, that um, the launch date for Sword Art Online Season 3, Alakization, I believe it's uh, pronounced, so, sort of online allocation. Uh, the first episode is going to air October uh, 2018. And it's supposed to be quite the long series from what we've been told. But uh, they've already posted images of it online, and it's got a very different visual style to it. It certainly does. Because it's being done by a different studio. Really? Yeah, it's a different studio that's doing it this time. Yeah, we talked so, about that last week, how uh, anime can jump from studio to studio. And yep. just... And this time it's being done by a different studio. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so what the previous studio that was A One Pictures, or is that um, upper? Oh no, I apologize. It is. Uh, well, no, hold on. I'm probably getting that wrong about the studio. It might be the same studio, but just a new director. Oh, I see. So yeah, I probably got that bit wrong. Okay. Yeah, no, it's A One Studios. My apologies. I'm sorry. No worries. Uh, it seems that they're introducing a character, I believe the name is Alice. And so that might be Alice-ization? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know anything about the books. Yeah. But uh, according to the article we uh, that we're referring to, it seems that they're um, basing it off of the light novels volumes 9 through 14. Mm -hmm. So that's going to cover a lot of ground. Yeah, it's going to cover a ton of stuff. Hopefully they're able to do it justice, though. Um, it's a lot of material, and as we also discussed pre uh, previously, um, you know, uh, a lot of animes just tend to try to rush through things when they've got a lot of, a lot of content to cover rather than uh, giving... Um, rather than giving... Uh, Giving it time to uh, Giving mature. Giving it time to mature properly. Yeah. But this is also the day and age of 13 episode seasons rather than, you know, 50, 60, or like even 25 episode seasons. Right, right. Well, Sword Art Online has been, traditionally, um, they, they go season by arc. So they, yeah, they do a 13 episode arc twice and call that a season. Um, so the question is, are they going to try to put all of this into the... 26 episode arc or cram it into another 12 episode 12 13 episodes for sort of online three yeah no they've already said that it's gonna be a longer season than the first two 
season one was 25 episodes. Right. So this it's going to be a long season. Okay. So they've already said it's going to be a long one. Okay. And for the next bit of uh, news, this is actually really exciting for me personally. Um, the Vinland Saga is being turned into an anime. Uh, What's the, that? Vinland Saga is a manga that I've been personally reading. Um, and it is based off of actual Norse historical figures. Um, and um, it's the story of war and what that does to people uh, during the Viking era. Um, it's really, really intense, really good storytelling, really great characters. Um, the, uh, a chapter 148 just barely got published. Um, oh, wow. But, yeah, um, and according to uh, Wikipedia, the anime is actually going to be streamed via Amazon. So Amazon already has the rights for the Amazon, for the uh, anime streaming here in the States. Okay, then. So, so that's something to look forward to? That's something to look forward to. I mean, it's... Um, uh, Studio Wit is working on it, and they're the ones who do Attack on Titan, Ancient Megas Bride. So pretty high-quality animation high quality animation and uh deep subject material mm -hmm. so they're used to doing stuff like that also they're not they're used to not shine, shine away from violence no and vinland saga is also very violent okay you know if they're gonna do viking stories justice if they steer away from violence they're not doing it right mm -hmm. nope i agree i totally agree and uh, that's it for the news unless there's anything else you wanted to cover uh nothing at this time okay great well, we're going to go ahead and go into our next segment. Our next segment is three episodes in. And this week we are covering Gintama. Uh, Gintama is a, um, is a parody show. It's mm. a parody anime. Um, it runs in Shonen Jump, a uh, weekly Shonen Jump, which is uh, the same uh, weekly uh, manga series, uh, manga magazine, mm -hmm. that, um, you know, it had Bleach, it had Naruto, it still has One Piece, uh, multiple other uh, things as well. I believe it has um, My Hero Academia. I can Probably. talk about that. Um, but yeah, uh, Shonen Jump is a very, very popular manga in Japan, a manga uh, magazine in Japan. Yeah. And you can actually get um, it digitally released in English here in the States for like a monthly fee of like $10 or something like that. I could be wrong about that. Okay. Um, but I do know that you can still, like, um, it's, I think it's Viz that does it, that they, they have like a, a partnership with, uh, okay. with, um, with Shonen Jump and they're, they translate the manga that sounds into right. English and release it digitally. That sounds right. Um, but yeah, um, let's go ahead and go into, but anyways, uh, Gintama is a parody manga and, um, one of the things about it is, uh, that Gin, well, uh, Gin Toki, the main character. Mm-hmm also known as Gein, he will constantly reference other anime or other uh, manga uh, that are in Shonen Jump and stuff. Speaking of which, within the first three episodes, he's lying on a couch reading an issue of, of Shonen, Shonen Jump, Jump, going, why am I still buying this? I am too old for this. I'm too old to be buying this. Uh, I'm too old to be buying Shonen Jump. But I keep I, telling myself I'm even going to stop, but I keep buying more. I keep saying, oh, this is going to be the last time. I won't buy it next week. But then I go and I buy it. And he's always like me pining for powers from the other manga as well. Like he makes the <laughs> comment, oh, I wish I had a Bankai. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Gintam is one of those uh, shows that the more you know about anime, the funnier, you, the funnier it will be to you. Um, and we know quite a bit about anime. Uh, we've been watching it uh, since we were real young people. Mm. Um, that being said, there's still a lot of anime we haven't seen. Um, but there's so also... There, there's a lot of tight references that um, are very very pinpointed references mm -hmm. that, you know, if you don't get it, that's just going to blow right by you, mm -hmm. and there's still plenty more to have. Well, it's also not just for manga, but they also, like, do, like, famous, like, pop culture icons and stuff sure. in Japan that they'll go ahead and, like... They were like making... a Who Do You Think You Are... Then drop it. Then name drop. Exactly. Who do you think you are? That person, or like they'll make a face that like a comedian's famous for making type thing, and they're mm. like, "You're not that person." Um, so uh, suddenly he, suddenly he has a chin. Yeah. Suddenly he's got a massive chin that goes out way past his face. Uh, yeah, but um, so the first episode. Um, well, I'm interested in hearing what your thoughts are with the first couple of episodes okay. because I'm. This is three episodes in, so we're supposed yes. to watch the first three episodes and then kind of give you guys our thoughts about it. Um, 
I've currently watched 121 episodes of Gintama, so um, this was my ploy to get my brother to finally watch the show, because I've been trying to get him to watch it for years. Okay. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I hated episode one. Episode one was the dumbest thing I'd ever seen. Okay. The way they chose to introduce characters, the way they chose... They, they, they tried too hard to be funny in my book. Okay. It just... There was no flow, no consistency. Mm -hmm. They crammed a whole bunch of characters at you with narrations and freeze frames and dialogue. It, it's... And it was just too much to try to take in all at once. It was not... It was the worst way to do character introductions and they did it on purpose oh they did it on purpose because it's the worst way to do it so because this challenge was three episodes in i didn't want to watch episode two after watching episode one i just couldn't stand this stuff but i did i watched episode two it gets better it's... ladies and gentlemen it gets so much better <laughs> oh my gosh and episode uh, episode one is like walking into a really tacky restaurant and episode two is finding out it has good food <laughs> and uh yeah yeah it's uh gosh i love game thomas so much it's just it's, so delightfully silly it's uh it's uh the way that it starts off is that it's um it starts you off just kind of throw it, they just throw you into the pool. The first episode is a two-parter. They yeah. throw you into the pool, um, and they just kind of expect you to learn how to swim. Um, like, <laughs> it's like, so so they, they give you a period genre piece. You get one guy in a kimono fighting against four other guys in kimonos, all holding katanas, and you're expecting a period piece. Guy runs away. Guy runs away into an alleyway. Guy runs into an alleyway and then has to jump out of the way of a flying car. Okay, what period piece are we in now? Mm -hmm. We are still being chased by men in kimonos with katanas. Mm -hmm. And dodging space aliens and flying cars. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can tolerate the first few minutes of nonsense, you find out the reason for that is it's taking place in feudal Japan. After aliens took over. <laughs> mm-hmm. And instituted the no-sword policy 20 years ago mm -hmm. and brought them technology. So everybody's still wearing kimonos. Everybody's still having these cultural references. They pull their hair back into top knots and are, mm -hmm. and are you know, what you would expect to see in the time period of... Just after the uh, Edo period, when people are starting to mm -hmm. become more civilized, but instead mm -hmm. of being civilized by it's the, Meiji the, the Meiji Restoration, the Meiji Restoration, or rev revolution. Rev revolution, yeah. Mm -hmm. But instead of it being America and the West helping to civilize the the culture, and in, which is the time period of things like um, the Last Samurai and mm -hmm. many other. Uh, their forms of media. Instead, they have a space alien culture that has brought them TV and manga and every modern Japanese convenience possible. Mm -hmm. Plus. Yeah, see, um, for me, the first couple of so episodes kind of felt like uh, they were made for the fans of the comic because it just rushed through the characters so quickly. And when I first watched it, I had no clue who the characters were at all. No, but they're I was just... so far into the series that I was like, oh, hey, I love that guy. I love that guy. You know, because okay. I just love all the characters in the show. Uh, but anyways, uh, Gin Toki is the main character. He's a silver-haired, wavy-haired samurai mm. uh, who runs a, sh uh, or former samurai, who runs a store called Odd Jobs Gin, where it pretty much, if you pay us, we'll do it for you. End of discussion. So they do anything for money. Usually they end up doing just real little crappy jobs like... At the very beginning, where they're running away from the set, where he and his two employees are running away from the samurai, uh, they were um, mistaken for spies, but really they were just trying to find a cat. Yeah, they were trying to find a cat. They were mistaken for spies, um, but uh, <laughs> because somebody paid them to find their missing cat, mm -hmm. or yeah, yeah, or wants to pay them. Yeah, we'll pay them once they deliver the cat. 
But um, sh uh, sh we have uh, Gintoki, we have Shinpachi, we've got Kagura. Shinpachi is what they, they, they within the show, the show even self-paradizes itself. Um, they say that uh, Shinpachi is the show's straight man. So he's the one who has the normal reaction to the out-of-world situations. Um, and that's what a straight man is, is in Japanese comedy. Mm -hmm. A straight man here in America, um, it's like Abbott and Costello, where Costello's the loud, obnoxious one, whereas Abbott mm -hmm. is, you know, the very straightforward and very serious one. So he's the straight man. Yes. Whereas Costello's the one who's just going crazy. Where uh, So that's what it is in America. Whereas in Japan, the straight man is the one who ha is supposed to have the normal person's reaction to the crazy out-of-world stuff. Right. So Shinpachi is the straight man of the show. And then Kagura is this tiny little red-haired girl who speaks very, very polite Japanese, but is incredibly crass... <laughs> <laughs> in her actions and even though she's speaking polite japanese she's very crass in the things that she says um there's, she there's is... a beautiful dichotomy in uh when you take posh and throw in vulgar mm -hmm. and but the thing is she doesn't she's incredibly ignorant and stupid and wonderful and i love her um but anyways uh then after that they also kind of introduce the villains for the first arc and they're just some no-name uh, guys uh, and then we learn um uh, that we get introduced to the Shinsengumi, who are a reoccurring group of characters that we see. They're they're the police force, uh, pretty much. They're a specialized police force um, that are still able to use swords and stuff like that. They're mm -hmm. pretty much the government. A lot of people accuse them of having been, um, you know, samurai who uh, cast aside their pride for the ability to still use swords and stuff. Um, but uh, we, we meet Hijikata, who is the vice captain. Uh, who's also voiced by the same guy who voices um, um, Zoro mm -hmm. in One Piece. And we meet Okita, who is the best swordsman, mm. but it's no secret that he wants Hichikata's position, as shortly after we le learn about them and they go on a raid to try to c capture these bad guys, Hijika uh, Okita sneaks up on Hichikata with a bazooka and tries to blow him up. It was just a joke. <laughs> Um, we then, uh, learn, um, we meet other characters like Otose and Catherine, and Otose is the old woman who runs the bar beneath the place that Gintoki is co constantly in debt, mm -hmm. and, uh, he loses, uh, and he's renting his place from Otose, from downstairs. Okay. Um... Anyways, oh, we keep meeting, well, like, the first couple, the first episode is just pretty much meeting the characters of the entire show. Like, we meet Katsura, who hates being called his nickname. Um, Gintoki always calls him Zura. Mm. But he, uh... And he tries correcting him every time, and, and it never sticks. Oh, but that's running gag in the show, too. Like, of course. later on, they're in disguise, and this happens multiple times. Later on, they're in disguise... And they call Katsura by his in-disguise name. A lot of the times it's a name he's picked for himself. And he's so used to correcting people who call him his nickname. He always corrects them and says, Oh, I'm not James. I'm Katsura. Or something like that. Okay? <laughs> but then we meet uh, Elizabeth, who is... We never learn what Elizabeth is as far as I know. It's this person walking around like in a weird duck suit. Yeah, this pale white duck suit. Never says anything and always holds up signs. Uh, and then we meet Otoe, who is one of my personal favorite characters. It's uh, Shinpachi's older sister. And um, I'm very, very sad that you didn't get a chance to watch episode three. That's true. I planned on trying to get episode three in, but... Um, time just got away from us. Time just got away from us this week. One of the reasons I really wanted you to watch episode three is because there's a couple of lines that perfectly paint Otoe's character. And one of those lines is, if sorry was enough, we wouldn't have seppuku. She says as she's offering King Toki a dagger. <laughs> if sorry wasn't enough, we wouldn't have ritual suicide. If sorry wasn't enough, we wouldn't... If sorry was enough, we wouldn't have ritual suicide. <laughs> and she's handing him... <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, like, what happened... Like, kill yourself. So, so the first one's just kind of this crazy adventure about them trying to get a guy's house back who lost his house. Yes. Um, to a couple of, um... Disreputable thugs. Some, some thugs who turn out to be land sharks. Mm. Um, 
And the overall plot is that they're trying to destroy the city of Edo, which is, you know, uh, what modern-day Tokyo is. And they're trying to, uh, they want to destroy the city so they can go ahead and sell the land and make tons of money doing it. Um, and so they get this guy's house because his house is right on top of a fault line. And they, uh, they built this giant machine and, uh, you know, uh, they're able to destroy the machine and prevent it from happening without, but there's also lots of wild and crazy hijinks. Oh, that's right. We also meet, um, Ayame, the ninja who is completely in love with Gintoki, and Gintoki wants nothing to do with her. Because she's crazy. Mm -hmm. I'll just stop with that. <laughs> she's crazy. But you saw her, how crazy she gets during episode two. Mm. Yep. But, um, so episode one and two is just, you know, introducing the cast, um, and, you know, kind of showing how, they're, how they work together as of now. Episode three is how Shinpachi met Gintoki. Ah, oh, so it's some flashback stuff. So it's flashback stuff. And then after that, it's how, the, you know, I think episode four or five is when they meet Kagura and where they meet the giant dog, mm. um, Sadaharu. The giant dog who chews on people's heads. Uh, yeah, that's what the dog does. It's a running gag. And the reason the dog becomes friends with um, Kagura is because Kagura can't be hurt by him. And she thinks he's playing. He, see, he's best friends with the person who lets him chew on his head, uh, on her head, constantly. Well, not for a while. For for the first several episodes, when they when they actually add um, Sadaharu to the team, mm -hmm. he uh, he is constantly trying to actually kill her, and she thinks he's playing. She thinks he's playing. She yep. thinks he's playing. Um, but yeah, um, the next episode is how, uh, Shinpachi meets, uh, Gintoki. Mm. And, um, it starts off with the death of, um, Otoe, or Otae, and, um, Shinpachi's dad, who was the owner of a dojo. Mm. And he told them that, you know, um, uh... I forget what his, what his dying words were, but uh, pretty much he leaves them in care of the dojo. I see. And But he also left them with a lot of debt, so they have to both work, and so they both have part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. um, but them being raised as the children of a samurai, they were taught this way of the sword growing up, so they don't really have any job skills. Uh -huh. So uh, Shinpachi has a job as a, as a cashier and like a waiter at a, um, at like a local dessert bar. Mm-hmm. And he, uh, he, um, hmm, what am I trying to, oh, he's being chewed up by the boss because he's still not very good at running the register. I see. And the boss is, like, beating on him and stuff like that. And, um, one of the patrons who's a, um, oh, I, I should have made a note of it. I thought I could remember it, but, um, the aliens. Okay. Um, there's a name for it in, in the show. Right. Um, anyways, um, some aliens say, oh, hey, go easy on him. It's, it's really sad seeing a samurai, uh, being reduced to that stage. Uh, we, uh, you know, they used to be so proud and they were so strong and vigilant and fighting us off and, and like, as they order a glass of milk and he comes out with it and they say, uh, you know, but these days when we see a samurai like this, we can't help but want to mock him. And so they trip him. Well, they trip him, and the, the milk goes flying, and the milk goes flying on um, a manto. That's what they're called. Thank you. A manto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These starry sky people. Mm -hmm. That pretty that, that kanji, the, it pretty much just means heaven people. Mm -hmm. So, people from out of, uh, from from the sky. Okay. The amanto. Thank you. you um, but the, um, and the amanto are just various races of creatures. Like, these ones happen to be, like, uh, leopard-looking men. Um, and, uh... He spills the milk, and the milk happens to um, fall on top of Gintoki. Mm -hmm. And um, they start making fun of him, or the the, the jackal, the, the Amanto start making fun of um, of uh, Shimpachi, and the owner comes out and starts beating on Shimpachi for daring to, you know, spill the milk and, like, get it over their customers and stuff. And then uh, suddenly Gintoki says, hey... Lay off, of, lay off of him, and he delivers an uppercut to the owner and sends him flying across the room. And, uh, 
he starts ranting to them about how his doctor says that his blood sugar is too high. So he's only allowed to have one, so he only allows himself to have one chocolate parfait a week. And so he, uh, and that happened to be the day he was having a chocolate parfait and they ruined it for him. And so he goes and he beats the crap out of the Amonto and uh, Shinpachi comes out and thanks him and stuff for, for sticking up for him. And he uh, says, oh, don't worry about that, but I've got to get going. And so he takes off and as soon as he takes off, the cops show up. It turns out the people that he beat up were ambassadors and which made this international incident. And the police are going to go, are arresting Chimpachi. Mm -hmm. And Chimpachi's like, no, 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 it's not me. It wasn't me. It was this other samurai guy. He took off. Them. I was like, oh, they always say that. But look at you. You've got the murder. You've got the weapon on you already. And Shinpachi looks down and he has the wooden sword that King Toki always has at his side. Mm. Uh, at his hip with blood dripping off of it. Wow. Um, so, uh, anyways, uh, long story short, um, he goes after Gintoki, um, they end up in, um, their home, he, uh, oh, on their way home, they run into his sister, uh, Shinpachi's sister, Otai, mm -hmm. Otae, uh, t or Tae, however you want to say her name. Oh, uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've met her already in episode two, she's involved in, uh, helping them at the kitchen table, and some creepy guy... From the police forces oh, under the table. Oh. And he ends up getting stomped. Kondo Isao, he is in love with Otai. Uh, and he's constantly stalking her. Yeah. And ends up in the weirdest locations. Well, Otai is not a pushover. And she hates this stalker. Yeah. And is always beating the crap out of him. And he's, yeah, he's the head of the Shinsenguni. Ah. Um, he, so he's the one that uh, the other one tried to blow up with the bazooka? No, no. Um, they're in the second episode. Um, uh, we did kind of skip talking about him, um, but in the second episode, after they've uncovered the plans, um, uh -huh. which was the it, they found them during the first raid. Yeah, the guy um, Hijikata is talking to somebody else. So the guy who almost got blown up mm. is talking to someone else. The someone else he's talking to is the captain. Hijikata is the vice captain. Ah, Kondo is the captain, and the vice captain is the one that almost got blown up. Yes. The vice so, captain so, who almost got blown up. Okay, so we have the captain, and he's stalking the sister. He's stalking the sister. We have the sub-captain, who is the brains of mm -hmm. the operation. And then we have the best swordsman, who wants to kill the brains of the operation so he can take his place. So he can take his place. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't do well with all these names. No, I... Yeah. And even though I watched 121 episodes, I had to write the names down. Because I know the names, and when I watch the show, I'm able to keep up with it at this point. But for now, our first episode where they introduce a dozen characters at you mm -hmm. like that, it's oh, real yeah. hard to keep track of it. And, you know, even with some anime, even your favorite characters, you don't always get the names of them. If you, A, don't... I mean, I don't speak Japanese. I don't hear Japanese um Difference it all runs together for me oddly. Uh -huh. I mean, I can pay, piece out a handful of words here and there, but I mm -hmm. but I do exclusively do subtitle mm -hmm. anime when possible. Yeah. So seeing the names mentioned, I could identify who, which character is which by the shape of the let by the arrangement of letters, but I didn't. But I don't need to s pronounce it, and I don't need to hear it to know it to, mm -hmm. to identify the. Mm -hmm. So that's that's just subtitle. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, for I, I I can name a handful of characters from Bleach. Yeah, well, you can name the characters who probably don't have, you know, Japanese-sounding names. Well, I can name Ichigo and Rukia and Chad, but I couldn't tell you what Straw Hat Man's name is or how it's pronounced. Luffy? No, no, they, they call him Straw Hat Man. He was oh, the, uh, with the green and white stripes in his oh, hat. Oh, okay, no, they, they, I, always, I always remember him being called Mr. Hat and Clogs. They might, I, I, yeah. It, it depends on the translation you get, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't tell you mm -hmm. many of the other characters' names. Okay, but uh, despite them, despite some of them being some of my favorite characters in anime. Okay. Yeah. Um, but like anyway, uh, the captain with the uh, the short captain with the white hair and the blue eyes with the ice powers. Hitsugaya Taicho. Yeah, Captain Captain Hitsugaya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I couldn't repeat that. Yeah. So. 
But uh, whereas you know, I I've actually lived in Japan for a couple of years. Yes, you did. So yeah, so yes, I, you did. I speak. I don't speak the language, the, the the language. I don't speak the language anywhere near as well as I used to, but I still try to keep it up. Okay. And watching anime helps with the listening aspect, at least. At, the, at least, yes. But um, anyways, um, on their way, um, as Shimpachi is chasing down King Toki, and mm-hmm. King Toki is riding away on his scooter, and um, they come across uh, Otae. Mm-hmm. And Otae says, uh, is wondering what on earth uh, Sh- Shimpachi is doing not at work right now. And so she jumps him and starts beating him up, saying, what are you doing? Why aren't you at work? Did you get fired again? And as she's beating him, she says, even though you have a pathetic paycheck, we need that pathetic paycheck. It's a big part of us, of us being able to stay afloat as she's beating him on the ground and stuff. And he's like, no, no, sister, 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 sister. It's him. It's his fault. It's him. It's him. It was all him. He, he's the reason. And um, Gintoki is smiling to himself, thinking that he's gotten away as he's on his scooter. And then all of a sudden, Otaya has appeared right behind him. And she goes... Hi, with like closes her eyes and just has this big smile on her face and then scene cut the next thing we see is them inside of their dojo uh-huh. a big old welt on King Toki's left cheek uh-huh. and blood coming down his face and he's like I'm very very sorry for my actions please forgive me and that's when Otai says if sorry was enough we wouldn't have ritualistic suicide and she pulls out a knife. Shink. <laughs> uh huh. That's the kind of character that she is, and I love her to death. She's wonderful. Um, but uh, another um, Amanto shows up, uh, mm-hmm. saying that you promised to pay me back, and I'm tired of waiting for it. Give me the money that you that your father promised to pay me. Um, and a uh, couple one th- um, rather than sell the dojo. Um, which they promise to protect. Uh, Otai offers to work for the Amanto at this new night cl- illegal nightclub that he is uh, putting together. Um, long story short, they're able to save her from from the nightclub. Um, and uh, actually, before that, uh, they they get to the nightclub uh-huh. and they. Um, they're able to uh, save her from being uh, forced to get into this uh, this swimsuit, and uh, Gintoki says, um, "Get them, uh, uh, get your sister out of here. I'll hold them off for you." And um, as they're running off, uh, Otaya says, "Who was that man? Why is he so willing to help us?" And uh, um, uh, Shimpachi says. Something along the lines of, I don't, I don't really know, but uh, he has a true samurai uh, spirit. I knew it from the first moment that I saw him. Uh, and right before they run away, they show Gin, uh, Gin Toki doing some awesome attacks and knocking people over with guns and stuff like that. And then um, within a second of him saying uh, he's got a samurai soul, Gin Toki is running alongside them already. And then Shinpachi starts yelling at him, saying, like, what were you doing? Weren't you supposed to hang back there and defeat them for us? He's like, uh, it's really hard. It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. And so it's three of them running. Okay. Uh, but they end up uh, sinking the ship, and the guy gets in trouble for having an illegal, um, an illegal, uh, you know, pretty much brothel or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the episode ends with um, Otai telling um, Shinpachi to go ahead and go after um, Dean Toki because... Um, they reveal that the father did not, that we did not see everything the father told them before he died. The second half of it is there may be a time when you have to put away your sword, but you may come across people who have a sword in their heart. And those are the people that you should have in your lives. Ah. And Shinpachi realizes that, uh, Dean Toki, even though he goes around with a wooden sword, he still has a sword in his heart. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's where the third episode ends. Anyways, it's a delightful series. It's very, very funny. Um, I highly recommend it to our Now that I've gotten past the first episode, I think I can continue watching it. Okay, please do. It's such a fun show. I'll give it a try. I'm, uh, they're making new episodes for it again. Um, so, and like they're on episode 300 something at this point. (laughs) So I'm fine on at least watching, trying to get a couple of episodes in a week, uh, just to keep going with it. Right. Uh, just because it's such a delightful, silly show. But one of the things I also really like about it, um, now that we're kind of done talking about the story, one of the things I really like about it is that it's not always a comedy, you know? 
it's, it's a comedy that knows when to take things seriously. And there's a couple of very serious dark arcs in the story. Okay. Um, they still have jokes in them and stuff. Uh, but those arcs deal with like character death and character development and stuff like that. Sometimes, so, sometimes you can get some of the best humor through dark arcs mm-hmm. because you need the humor to get through it. The best jokes in all of Star Wars have to be in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. It's a pretty dark story mm-hmm. overall, but you know, and those jokes were absolutely necessary Who's to get through it. Scruffy looking. Who's scruffy looking. Mm-hmm. No, this one goes there. That one goes there. Mm-hmm. You could use a good kiss, mm-hmm. and all that within the first twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, um, it's a like, and even in the first couple episodes, you know, there's times where uh, you know it's very very silly. Yeah. But also, the show knows when to put on the brakes on the silliness because it's a very serious moment. Right. Um, and, you know, they use those serious moments to really kind of help progress the story. Yes. And then, yes, you know, do. once those serious moments were passed, they get back into the silliness. Right. So I love Dean Tama. I think it's a fantastic show. Mm-hmm. Again, it's one of the longer ones. Um, so those who don't have a ton of time, you know, you give at least a couple of episodes a try and see what you think about it. Yeah. Um, like I said, the more you know about anime, the more you enjoy it. Uh, if you've got more time to watch anime than others... Give it a try. I mean, the entire reason I got into One Piece uh, was because I worked at a library at, at my college mm-hmm. uh, during the summer. Yeah. And it was dead. Absolutely dead. And I happened to be positioned on a desk by myself mm-hmm. on the third floor. And I was watching an entrance. Um, but there was nothing to do the entire summer. Um, and I, I was working there, you know, 25 hours a week. And, you know, for 23 of those hours, I was at that desk. Yeah. So I... Um, yeah, I, I decided to go ahead and give One Piece a try. And uh, that's what I did to pass the time while I was at that job. Oh, excuse me. That's what I did to pass the time while I was at that job. And um, I became hooked, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't watch the anime that much anymore, but uh, I love the manga. The manga is incredible. Yeah. So, but anyways, yeah, that's um, that's three episodes in. Unless there's anything else you wanted to cover about uh, Gintama? Uh, that covers everything from Gintama. I did want to inject something back into news. Okay. Um, so I found out today that um, Netflix original movies are going to be banned from the Oscars and from uh, the Cannes Film, Film Festival. Yeah, I've heard about that. Um, so apparently uh, some some Netflix originals have already won Oscars. Mm-hmm. But apparently, what had happened was, um, the Oscars was were courting Netflix, trying to get them to uh, start releasing some of their material in theaters. Mm-hmm. And Netflix appreciated the Oscars, but weren't going to put anything in in theaters. They enjoy their platform, and they're not going to contribute. And so Steven Spielberg has said, maybe they can win Emmys, but the Oscars is not for them. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I can see that. I mean, Emmys is for TV. Tonys are for Broadway. Oscars are for films that are released in theaters. Mm-hmm. So, and if we need to start having an award ceremony for award, for original streaming content that's not in there theaters. There is one. It's called the Streamies. Well, so there. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know how se- how seriously people take it. Right. But I do know that there's the streamies. So... So I don't think Netflix needs the Oscars. No, neither do I. Honestly. Neither, and honestly, I don't much care for the Oscars myself. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have some friends who are very, very into it, and they love watching it every year and trying to guess who wins and stuff like that. And that's fine. That's for them. Yeah. But I don't care. Uh, so what? <laughs> so the movies that I enjoy the most, they're never going to win an Oscar. I mean, I... Like Pacific a Rim, lot, a lot is, of Pacific Rim is one of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah. There's no way that would ever have won an Oscar. No, no. The Oscars are a very specific group, and you know, I've I've heard it said, and I don't disagree that there should be awards awarded five years later. Like if there are mil- films, if there are forms of media that after five years people are still talking about it. Mm-hmm. There should be awards for those. Mm-hmm. Because the Oscars are notorious for retroactively rewarding people's good work. Mm-hmm. Like, they'll give DiCaprio an Oscar for a movie he did where he's fighting bears in the wilderness. 
which isn't as good as some of his other work. But because at that time they were awarding somebody else that they had snubbed previously. And so they're, mm-hmm. they're playing the game of catch up, always trying to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you on that. A lot of people that even, people, so, even my friends who love the Oscars are like, oh, well, that person's going to win because they should have won for years. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so that's, that's what the Oscars do. That's the game. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I want to see an award ceremony, award show where they reward people who have had things out for five years or so. And they've stood. They're still uh, talked about. People are still talking about it. I can see that. Do you know what I think needs an award? What? Kung Fury. Oh, gosh. Why? Why does that deserve a reward? <laughs> because it's still amazing. Okay, sure. sure. Whatever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so that was something that came up today that I wanted to bring up real quick. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, moving on to our next segment, we've got um, Recommendation of the Week. Not just yet. Uh, We're still doing three episodes in. We're going to talk about just real fast. Uh, At the end of the previous three episodes in, we're going to... Just, we're going to announce what we're doing for the next episode. Right. And next episode, we're going to watch A Certain Magical Index. Right. Okay. We're going to go ahead and watch the first three episodes of that, and we're going to go ahead and discuss it. So tune in next week, and we will uh, be reviewing the first three episodes of A Certain Magical Index. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. And then next after that, it's our recommendation of the week. All right. And this week, it's my turn, and I'm going to recommend... Attack on Titan Junior High. Why ever would you uh, recommend that? Because it's freaking hilarious. Okay. (laughs) Give our listeners a little bit of why. Okay. I mean, I enjoyed it. I thought it was silly. I don't know how many people I'd recommend it to, but you're recommending it to everybody that's listening to it. So, by all means, tell our listeners why why uh, uh, why you're recommending it. Okay, if you're a fan of Attack on Titan, and you've delved into the lore of what's going on, this will be a real treat for you. It's silly, it plays on all of the little quirks that are in the show, but it it takes out all of the darkness and drama that the original show was steeped in. So mm-hmm. if you wanted... If you want these characters... So it's great that you can take these characters that you've gotten to know and gotten to be involved with and see the drama and darkness in their lives and then just throw them into something silly. And that's what this show is. Attack on Titan Junior High is the story of these kids in a junior high class... The reason I'm recommending it is I got to watch it with my my oldest. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have to censor it. Yep. Uh, it's uh, it's Attack on Titan, but they took away the gore. Um, and uh, if you know Attack on Titan, it will be that much sillier. Uh, because they've replaced a lot of it with just... Uh, um, for those of you who know Attack on Titan, Levi is obsessed with cleanliness. Yes. Absolutely obsessed with it. And um, in Attack on Titan Junior High, rather than the Survey Corps, it's uh, the Wall Cleaning Club. The Wall Cleaning Club. So they, so there is a high school for humans and a high school for Titans, a junior high schools, and they're neighboring each other. And the Titans always come over and steal their cheeseburgers. Uh, not just the cheeseburgers, but their food and whatever food they can find. Yes, they take their lunches. And so. Aaron has sworn revenge that they will never take another lunch as long as he lives. Mm-hmm. It's a very silly short series, 12 episodes long. Um, if you're in the mood for just a silly laugh, yeah, go for it. So, yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to say about that, or should we move on to the next segment? Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next segment. Okay. It's... Our final segment on the show is always a creator shout-out. Um, and... Uh, I had I was going to talk about one thing, but I decided to go ahead and switch it. Uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about extra credits this week. Um, extra credits definitely doesn't need any more advertisement from us, um, but they're a fantastic channel on YouTube. They talk about the video game culture, video game development, um, and um, 
they started a series called um, Dan Sucks at Dark Souls. Uh, and and because of that, they went ahead and they did a they made another channel called Extra Play. Extra Play. Um, and I fell in love with the Dark Souls games because of that play of Dan Sucks at Dark Souls. Because at first it was just um, it was just uh, Dan and um, oh I'm forgetting his James? name James yeah thank yeah. you Dan and James they were sitting Dan had never played Dark Souls before. Whereas James had played it a lot. Right. And um, James was talking about the game design of Dark Souls and how Dark Souls teaches you to be patient and to walk through things and, you know, and um, it just teaches you to be a patient, a cautious player. Yeah, uh, he ta- he talks about the... F- James has been so involved in game design mm-hmm. and game development his whole career that he can, he can glean the philosophy that the developers were going from through the gameplay. And then he, mm-hmm. and then he brings that to the table. Yep. It's fantastic to listen to. Oh yeah. He's great. Um, but having them, having the two of them talk about the game, um, finally decided, I, I, I tried demon souls back in the day and I just yeah. didn't like it. I couldn't get into it. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, because of, um, how fascinated I was with, um, with uh with their dark souls play and just how they were talking about the development of the world and how the world tells you a story without actually saying anything um and how the game teaches you to play it without actually really seeing anything other than a couple of press this button to do this type thing um i decided to go ahead and give bloodborne a try yeah uh for the playstation 4 it's made by the same people um it's part of the souls born series if you want to go ahead and call it that Mm. um but rather than being fantasy horror, it's gothic horror. And it And it's a bit more Lovecraftian. Yeah, it's Lovecraftian gothic horror. And um I fell in love with Bloodborne. It's still one of my favorite games to this day. I mean I've I've played through all the Dark Souls games since then. Um played through quite a bit of Demon Souls, didn't actually finish it, uh just because I got distracted by other things, but Dark Souls uh, you know, thanks to that series, I fell in love with this, with the game. Uh, so I want to go ahead and give a shout out to them for helping me get into a series I absolutely adore. Um, yeah, go give them a watch on YouTube. Uh, yeah, that, that's it. That's extra credits and extra play. Oh, also, one of the reasons I'm bringing it up is because this week is their annual Battle of the Dans. They yes. have three Dans. Yeah, and they, they, usually... they only have a crew of maybe eight people, but three of them happen to be named Dan. Mm-hmm. I, so think that, I think there's more of them at this point um, but but at some point there were at some point there were and for the first the, this is the third year they've done Battle of the Dans and the first year it was just the three of them the second year they brought in some other people to be honorary Dans mm-hmm. and this year they just barely started it again and um, it's a very very fun series of friends playing video games together declaring who the best Dan is yes um, and uh Give it a watch. It's loads of fun. Yes. So Extra Credits has uh, five channels right now. So there's the Extra Credits channel, which they talk about game philosophy and um, general basics of game design. If you want to be a developer, what do you want? What what's your passions? What do you want to get into? And how things how people think their way through designing a game. Very good information all the way around, but it's also very general in nature. Then they started a channel, which we just talked about, the Extra Play, which is um, they're talking about games as they're playing it. They're, sometimes it's live streamed, but and they've started doing that more recently. They have they have a Twitch channel. They have a Twitch channel, mm-hmm. but um, basically they talk about the game that they're playing as they're playing it, and. Uh, some of it was, uh, like, they have a long-running series where they've, they've done Dark Souls 1 through 3. Um, I wanted to see them do more of uh, Skyward Sword, but they only ever did a few episodes of that into the mm-hmm. first temple. I'd love to see them do more of that. Um, but yeah, they have Extra Play, which is great. Um, they have uh, Design Club, where they go into depth of how certain games were designed. They have one on Portal. They have one on Mario Kart. uh, They have one on uh, the first level of Mario. Just talking about how it was designed as a tutorial to get you involved in the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, a number of other things. 
Um, their one on Mario Kart has some of the funniest things. Like they talked about the blue shell. It has been known by many names. Oh gosh. Death and Taxes Jerk Friend. The Liam Neeson. <laughs> Five stages of grief in three seconds. Alright, that's enough. Alright, that's enough. Um, they just recently started, uh, so they've been doing for a while, they've been doing um, Extra History, where they have a few episodes in a row talking about major events in history that's uh, very interesting stuff. And that's something that they actually started getting funded through Patreon. Yeah. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. But their most recent channel is Extra, Extra Sci-Fi. Sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Extra Sci-Fi, where they've been delving into the origin of science fiction material and where tropes that you didn't even know had an origin came from. They're just so ingrained into how we think Every things. trope has an Every origin. Every trope has an origin, but you might not know what they are. Okay. But how, how science fiction was born in the era of uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and mm-hmm. things of that nature. Yeah. And it's just fascinating as they delve into different uh, different topics. So, highly recommend everything that they do. Yeah, highly recommend it. So. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and cover that real fast. Um, but, yeah, um, I think that's it for today's episode. All right, we can't wait to see you next week. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> All right. If you guys have anything you want us to cover, any recommendations for us... Did you pause it just then? No, no, okay. we're still going. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I thought you could... We're still going. Okay, if you guys have any recommendations, anything you want us to listen to, uh, go ahead and send us uh, your uh, recommendations via Twitter. Um, you can follow me uh, at A.D. Whitaker. That's two T's in the last name. Yep. And where you... uh, and I'm on uh, Twitter as uh, Okomikeriko. Something like that. You're the one who has problem pronouncing Japanese names, and you're the one who went for a Japanese name. Well, some time ago, I worked with uh, a buddy of mine trying to write um, uh, some scripts for an anime of our own, and we developed a character, and the character that I was kind of basing on myself the most mm-hmm. was a cross between um a couple of greek gods it was between um dionysus mm. the god of food and mercury the messenger god and so we put it together and made the god of pizza delivery and his name was okumi Kariko, because that was a uh, pun on okonomiyaki and some other things so you based you no, named yourself after a character you based off of a greek god yes that's quite thinking quite highly of yourself Anyways. Well, yeah, the 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 short fat one that drinks. <laughs> anyways, and Mercury, thank you very much. Anyways, uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, that's no. it for this week's episode. If you have any recommendations for us, anything you'd like us to cover, or any tips on news, send it to us via Twitter, um, and we'd be happy to go ahead and review it and see if it's something we can cover. All right, that's it. Uh, I've been Andrew. I've been Lee. You have yourself a great day. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>